Hello everyone. In this video, we will be solving palindrome partitioning number 2 problem. It is a hard problem number 132. Let's look at the problem statement. Given a string s, partition s in such a way that each substring of the partition is a palindrome. If you look at the example here, a, a, b, if you partition it at the interval between a second a and b you will get two substrings a a and b and each of the substring is a palindrome if the whole string is already a palindrome like in the case example 2 we can we have to return zero um, like any other problem there are several ways of solving it one simplest way is the brute force where you can loop through each and every combination and try to check if it is a palindrome or not and if it is try to save it in an extra space in a variable and at the end compare the minimum number of cuts or partitioning that you will have to do to get your answer but the problem with that is the runtime complexity if you go with a brute force approach and try to loop through each and every combination and substrings you will end up with a runtime complexity of O of n cube. Let's try to solve this problem with O of n square using dynamic programming. We will break this problem into two sets. One is to identify the all the possible combinations of palindrome that we can build from the string and the other would be how to partition it optimally to get the best result. So the first one can be solved using dynamic programming let's use banana as our example so if i build a dynamic programming array a two dimensional array it would look something like this so in this dp the vertical side is i and the horizontal side is j as we already discussed a single character is always a palindrome so in this table where i is equals to j we can directly put a t or true value if we look at a combination of two characters, we can easily check if it is a palindrome or not if we compare the two characters by themselves. If I compare the character at position 0 which is B and position 1 which is A, they are not equal so it is going to be false. Similarly, if I keep on going down to all the combination, none of the adjacent characters are the same to compare the remaining combination where the character the string length is greater than 2 we can use a simple formula where the first and the last character in the string must be equal and the remaining substring after removing the first and the last character is a palindrome 2 as an example the j is equals to 2 and i is equals to 0 with that combination our substring will be b a n the formula that we discussed earlier can be written as s of i is equals to equals to s of j and dp of i plus 1 and j minus 1 if this condition is satisfied we can say that the string is a palindrome if we use this formula on our substring b a n the first condition is not satisfied as the end character the edge characters b and n are not the same it means it is not a palindrome and hence we can put false in the table so our next combination is i is equals to 1 and j is equals to 3 for this combination our string will be a n a if we run this string by our formula the first and the last character are equal and the remaining character is a palindrome. Using the same formula and approach, we can fill out the remaining boxes in this two dimensional array. Now that we have the dynamic programming table ready, we need to now check how many cuts are needed to get a palindromic substrings. Here on the right hand side, I have written our string and added few boxes just below them. We will be writing the number of cuts that are needed to parse the string from the 0th index to that particular index. We will try to loop through each and every combination of cuts that we can make and verify if 
after making the cut er, are all the substrings palindrome or not we will be using the dp table to verify if a substring is palindrome or not let's start with the first combination with two variables length and i where l will be the length of the substring that we will be using and i will be the pointer we'll start with l is equals to 1 and i is equals to 0 with this combination i am looking at the character b b by itself is always going to be a palindrome so i don't have to do any partition so my result will be 0 okay now if I increment my length by 1, now i 0, length is 2, so my string is ba. ba by itself is not a palindrome for sure, so I will have to break it. And the only combination that I can do is break it from the between. So after breaking it, both the substrings are a palindrome. The number of partitions can be calculated by the cuts that I have made for b plus 1 so for b made 0 partitions so for a will it will become 1 now we will increase our length to 3 with that combination my substring will be b a n and going by the same formula that we tried earlier is the whole string a palindrome no now we will have to break it and we can do a couple of combination we can break it from here or we can break it from here so let's try the first one if I break it from here B is a palindrome yes but a n is not so I cannot do this combination the next combination is I will have to break it from here which will make my substring as B a or a n does that work no so I will have to do two partitions to make it work between b and a and between a and n so with that being said so my number of partition will be the one that i've used before a plus one so result would be two so with two partitions i can make b a n proper palindromic substrings the reason we are starting this calculation from the first character all the way to the end is because we have to break all the characters in the whole string and find out the palindromic combinations. The next combination is crucial. So now the length is going to be 4 and i is equals to 0. So our substring is BANA. By itself, BANA is not a palindrome. So we cannot do a zero partition. Let's start with partitioning it from the first place. So if I place a partition here, B is a palindrome, yes. A and A is a palindrome, again, yes. If I make a partition here, automatically I get two palindromic substrings. So my result would be the, pal the total or number of cuts that I have made at B plus 1 which is going to be 1. I will have my result in the A column. I can continue digging into deeper where I am making up trying to do a partition here to see if I get an optimized result. So my result, uh, my two substring would be B A and N A. Both of them are not a palindrome so that wouldn't work. I will try to do it at the end. So B A N and then A separate which is again not two palindromic strings. So those combination will not work because we are looking for the best optimal result. The first cut is the best combination that we can bring out so far. Okay. So I will erase this and try a different combination. With length 5, five and i is equals to 0. Is my substring B is B A N A N A. Going by the same approach, the whole substring is not a palindrome so we cannot do zero partition we'll start with the first one b a and a not the combination that we are looking for or they are not the palindrome by itself now trying a different one b a so b a is not a palindrome but n a n is although n a n is a palindrome 
BA is not. So we cannot go with this approach or we will have to try something else. We can try this combination. We are cutting it B and A and then A and N which will give us the best combination B A and then N A N. So we have to make two, com two cuts here because we are making a cut at in between A and N we will have to look at what was the last value saved at n and increment it by 1. So 2 plus 1, 3. So after making 3 cuts, we can make the best possible case here. With the same approach, if you go with the last combination, it is the whole string banana. If we try the whole text, it is not a palindrome. If we cut it from the first, B is a palindrome and the rest of the thing is also a palindrome. So this is the best thing. So we will take the value that we obtained at B, increment it by 1 and save it under the last column. 0 plus 1 is 1 and we will return the last value that we saved in this array as our result. I hope you were able to understand this approach on the whiteboard. Now let's look at the C sharp implementation of this. Here is the C sharp implementation for that problem. I have tried to simplify it as much as possible. So I start with having some sort of a validation to make sure that the input is valid. Then I initialize a dynamic programming two dimensional array. And then, so for each individual characters I'm setting it to the true on the DP array because it's always going to be true a single character is always a palindrome that's why the second loop is to compare adjacent two adjacent characters and confirm if they are equal or not if they are which makes them a palindrome and I'm setting the value accordingly after that is done, the next is the important loop where I'm looking at are all the length greater than two. So starting with length three, if the characters, the end, the first and the last characters are the same and the DP of I plus one and J minus one is also a palindrome. This makes the combination or the substring palindrome and I'm setting it to true. After doing that, the next set is to loop through all the characters in our string and then do a substring compare it with our d using the dp verify if those are palindrome or not and then save the result so for example we start with the index i is equals to zero verify if dp of zero and i is already true if it is then we don't need to make any cuts so cuts is equals to zero if they come if the condition fails then we loop through the characters in that substring and try to cut it at each possible combination and verify if that individual substrings is a palindrome or not so we use the dp that we have built in the previous step and compare it and only save the result if it is better than the previously calculated cuts and we use this temporary variable to save that and at the end we take the last value in our cuts array and return that because that would have the best possible solution or the best possible combination saved this is how you can solve the problem this is just one approach there are definitely several other approaches I think like this is one of the cleanest approach that I've seen so far. I hope you were able to understand the approach and the code. I will be adding the link to my code on the GitHub in the description below. Feel free to check that out. If you have any comments or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me and I would be happy to talk about it. If you have any better answers or any suggestions for me, in terms of the approach that I have taken in solving this problem. I would be happy to talk about that as well. Again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.